I have a dog. Uh, you might have seen him on the way in because he was sitting right at the front door of the church, which he shouldn't be, so I hope he's gone. But with dogs or with animals, right, you know where you stand, they know where they stand. The relationship is very, very easy. Right? When they're hungry, they scratch the door. When they want to come in, they scratch the door. When they're bored, they scratch themselves. A lot of scratching really going on. Um, but, and, and dogs especially, they don't have this kind of two-facedness where they're just nice to you to get something. Cats, on the other hand, they're just evil. Um, but, but with dogs, or with cows, similarly, those, those kind of animals, like they're, the, the relationship is very, very straightforward. Right? There's no two-facedness. We human beings, we're complicated. We really are. Like, there's a lot going on. And, and this is, like, today's gospel is very, very interesting, like talking about what makes a person unclean. So unclean, obviously, is an expression we don't really use unless you want to be really offensive to someone. You know, man, if you COVID, I'll get you a bell. You can just walk around the place singing, saying unclean, unclean. It's not exactly a nice, nice thing to say to someone. Uh, but we, we, we can be very, very complicated. Our, it's what comes out of us that makes us unclean, i.e. sinful, okay? But it's what comes out of us. So it's not so much, you know, do we eat pork, not eat pork, um, or some of these traditions that, that the Jews would have had about washing. Again, hygiene is always good, but the Lord wasn't throwing aside these uh, traditions out of disrespect, but he was trying to teach them something, that virtue goes much, much deeper than where we wash or how we wash or what dishes we use for what. It, those kind of things, while, okay, it's, the, the, those traditions, it's not like they're completely wrong, but if you miss the point, which is the interior life, then it just doesn't matter how far you wash. It just doesn't matter if you've completely missed the point. I was in a parish a couple of years ago, and there was one lady who uh, didn't really like me. It happens. I don't mind. I mean, like, it's life, okay? And... Uh, she would have been somewhat irritated that my weekday mass took 25 minutes. <laughs> she, she has never come here. <laughs> uh, 25 minutes during the weekend. I, I, I did my best always to celebrate mass reverently and, and uh, as well as I could. Uh, but, you know, for a weekday mass, I like to try and keep it within 25 minutes, like a two-minute homily or something, you know, just to explain the gospel or to explain the readings at times, which may have been complicated. So... And she came to me once and she said, now, Father, you know, you know, here now, that's not how we celebrate Mass here. And I said, oh, really? Is that how we celebrate Mass here? Go on, go on, do tell. And she said, no. She's like, someone might need to get a bus at 20 past 10. So if your Mass is 25 minutes, they'll miss the bus. And I said, but they can, they can go, though. They can, they can, they can leave if, if they need to. They can, do you know what I mean? What if someone has a, uh, an appointment or a bus at a quarter past 10? Then what should I do? Or... Or 10 past 10. Uh, like if a person needs to go, they can, they can go. But do I have to shorten the, the mass for the 95, 99% of people who are grand if it takes 25 minutes? Do I have to shorten it just for that one person who might be a minute late? But they can just go if they need to. It's not a sin to leave mass early if you have to. Just, just go. So I remember one day then she was talking to me. And it was very, very interesting. Because, uh, as I say, she, she complained about me on numerous occasions. Uh, but then one day she came to me and she said, now, I have to change his name. We'll call him Tom. Isn't Father Tom fantastic? Father Tom was the parish priest. I've changed his name. Uh, isn't Father Tom fantastic? Oh, Father Tom is amazing. Father Tom now is absolutely wonderful. So Father Tom now, when he comes out now and he celebrates Mass, we all look forward to seeing Father Tom. Oh, Father Tom's great. And Father Tom now leads the rosary. And he's, oh, he's wonderful. Father Tom, he's great with the youth. And he's great, he's great now with the sick. And Father Tom, oh, Father Tom is wonderful. Well, God bless now, Father, and take care. And I thought, I, I, normally I don't think of these things. But I just thought, oh, my goodness. She wasn't actually complimenting Father Tom at all. She was trying to not compliment me, which I, I don't care. But the point I'm making is just how conceited we can be. Do you know what I mean? Where it looks like I'm being nice to Father Tom, but what I'm actually doing is I'm trying to, like, like if I came to you and said, isn't your sister wonderful? She said, oh, we love, we, everyone loves your sister. Oh, so everyone, everyone, they see your sister coming. They're just so delighted. Janie, she's the life and soul of the party, isn't she? She's wonderful. Take care of yourself now. I mean, I think we all know what we're doing. If someone does that to you, they know what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? Because no one would be, I don't think would be, it would be so tactless to be so elated about someone else who's so close to you, you know, you know how it works. I said, how, 
how complicated and conceited we can be. You know, to actually, I'm actually, what I'm saying is a compliment, but it's actually to get at someone else. I was talking to a person recently, <clears throat> a friend of mine from Naples, and uh, her aunt was, was, was dying. And they had taken care of the aunt now for 10, 10 years or more. She has Alzheimer's, like, so <clears throat> they'd go over to her house and they'd take care of her. She's quite a wealthy lady. She owns a whole stack of apartments, <clears throat> a whole apartment block. So, you know, they'd take care of her and they'd try and take care of her finances and all because, you know, she'd forget where her pin and she'd forget where she left cards and checks and the whole lot. So they'd try and take care of her and, and, and all of that. Great. Uh, when she started to get quite ill, suddenly the long-lost relations from Puglia decide to come visit. Oh, we heard she was ill, the poor thing, right? Now, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. It may just be that, you know, when someone is dying, the family do kind of gather around because maybe it's been a long time, maybe we've fallen out and... Now would be a good time to get things back together. If it wasn't for the fact that after she died, they contested the will and brought the family to court. You know, like they, they hadn't seen the lady in 20 years. They're all about her when the, and then, just like buzzards, flying around when they see a weak animal drop to the ground. Buzzards just circle, just wait for him to fall unconscious. That was it. Like it was, there was no real love, charity there. It was, it was self-seeking, but it looks on the outside to be, oh, we, we care about, what's, what was her name again? <laughs> Auntie. Auntie, let's just call her Auntie. You know? So again, we, we, can be com we, we can be complicated. Us Irish, we have this kind of a, 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 a tendency to be a smidgen negative, you know? You ever had this experience where you walk into a room or into a pub or into a church and very instinctively, we criticize. We see someone sitting up the front. Oh, Janie Bridie's up the front. Who does she think she is? Janie just wants to come celebrate. Just, just, just for the fall, I can just stay in the sexy. Bridie, Bridie will take over. You know, or you see someone like coming in with maybe a new frock, right? A new hat, a new car. Janie, huh? They came into a bit of money. Are they dodging tax or what? And just, it's just interesting. Just, just, just how, how quickly it all happens. Right? Because I, I went to, I did a couple of missions in America, and I couldn't believe how positive Americans are. They, they, they don't do that, not, not like we do anyway. They see something that's awesome, fantastic, it's great. You know, they're actually, they're really, po when they see someone do well, they actually applaud it. We see someone do well and say, well, who do they think they are? Are they better than us now, is it? Huh? They'll be moving out of the neighborhood, I suppose, moving up to D4 or something. Do you know, immediately we get all kind of snooty. Rather than thinking they worked hard, they did their work well, they got paid for it, fair play to them. You know, as Irish, we're not really good at that. We tend to kind of want to pull people back a small bit so they don't, oh, there's the expression, yeah, they're getting notions. <laughs> right? Driving a Mercedes, oh, getting notions now, yeah, yeah. For anyone who's not Irish, it means notions of grandeur. You know, they think they're notions of greatness, they think they're better than us. And I don't know, maybe it's from our history with the English, I don't know, I don't know. But there is this thing in us like that. If someone starts to get ahead, we kind of want to pull them back rather than affirm and celebrate their success. You know, it's, it's, it's not a good trait in us, really. It's not, it's not very good. Again, what the Lord is talking about here, these things coming, it, it's, from, it's what, what comes from out of a man that makes him virtuous or non-virtuous, clean, unclean. It's what comes out of us that makes us sinful or not, you know? And, 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 and that's what, what's important, like that, that the, the interior life. It's not just that we, we have gone to Mass. I was physically present in the building while Mass took place. That's nice and it's a good start. But it's not the goal. The goal is the interior life, that in my heart of hearts, I went to worship God and to receive him in Holy Communion, that he will change my interior life. Receiving Holy Communion doesn't make you look any different. But it's supposed to change us from, from within. From within. So that then rather than seeing how I can benefit from any person or any situation, I start to think, how, how can I give? How can I affirm? How can I lift up? How can I help? Imagine, imagine just living with that attitude. You walk into a room and rather than kind of trying to pull people down, 
She said, what can I do? Is anyone here who looks lonely? Maybe I'll head over there and have a chat with them, see how they're getting on. Do you know what I mean? Like just the, 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 the change in mentality, it changes you completely. Rather than being, uh, you know, as I say, self-seeking, we, we think, how, how can I be more like the Lord? Like, what, what would Jesus do here? You, know, you, you, you see someone who's a bit down? I, I mean, I, I've mentioned this before, but I hope this is still the case. I think it's still the case in rural Ireland. But at the time of funerals, like, I love seeing how the neighborhood just gathers together, you know? Um, maybe it's kind of a pre-COVID thing as well, but it'll, it'll come back, I'm sure, hopefully. And when someone passes away, obviously the neighbors call over and, and there's the whole uh, slew of people that pass through the house or, or pass through the funeral home. But what I love then is how the neighbors then come over with cooked dinners, you know, for the, for the, the days before the funeral and maybe for the week after it, like, do you know what I mean? They come over like with a bit of roast chicken. And, and uh, the typical Irish thing as well is... is <laughs> They walk in with the, with the roast chicken. Now, now Teasy, there you go. That, that's for you now. Oh, you're awful. You're awful. Lot. <laughs> we, say, we say, you know, you're awful rather than thank you. You're very good. Oh, you're terrible. You're terrible. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that at all. You shouldn't have done that. Oh, take it away. Take it away. Uh, but, you know, but, and now dinner's ready. I think it's like, that's, that, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing kind of in our culture. I, as I say, I hope it's still there. I think it's still there. I don't, I don't really know, but that we, we take care of each other. You know, it's what comes out of a man that makes him virtuous or vice-filled, clean or unclean, sinful or, or close to the Lord. It's what comes out. It's what we do. So I think it's, it's, it's a good thing after a gospel like this to, to ask ourselves honestly, is there something more I can do? Is there something that, that's kind of in me? Maybe a resentment. Maybe an anger. Maybe, maybe a jealousy. Or maybe an unforgiveness towards someone. That when I see them, to be honest, deep down, I kind of hope they fail. I kind of hope, you know, another awful Irish expression, that they get their comeuppance. You know, that, which means that I hope that they actually get taken down a step or two in the ladder. I hope they get their comeuppance. You know, it's a, you're actually, you're wishing failure on someone. When someone says that, they're, they're wishing failure on someone. Imagine someone wished failure on you. Gee, I heard about a, a lady who... Um, had difficulties getting pregnant and then eventually thank god it all came good and she had two kids and she had a sister who had similar problems and uh but for the sister things never came good and i was talking to the sister and she said i'm so jealous of my sister i actually hoped she'd lose the child do you know what i mean and i was you know, it's one of those things obviously you're not as a priest you're not supposed to react but inside you're just horrified that someone could actually, could even think something. I, I you know, I, I wished that on her. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're capable, we're capable of, of dangerous things, dangerous things in our hearts. We really are. We're capable of them. But with God's grace, we can overcome them. With God's grace, we can. With our desire, our desire to do good and God's grace, we can actually overcome them. We can be positive. We can be affirming. We can be forgiving. We can be helpful. We can be saints. Or we can kind of stay where we are and just be satisfied with being a bit grumpy and negative and critical and pulling people down and sure, look, I haven't killed anyone. Or we can just maybe today, as like listen to the word of Jesus, you know, who speaks to us. Listen to me, all of you, and understand. That's how he prefaces this. Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that goes into a man from outside makes him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that make him unclean. And so today and every day, let, let us kind of be much more aware of what's going on in here, what's going on in here, what our intentions are. And let us be positive and affirming. Let us see people in as much as we can as God sees them. When God sees you, he sees your potential. He sees what you, what, what you have, all the good that you have done, and what you can do, what you could do. You know, like, like all parents, they look at their, their little five-year-old, and they go, oh, he's going to be a rocket scientist. See it? Just he's so good at his two-by-twos. You know? And, and, and they, they see all this, they, they see potential. You know, he's a bit taller. Oh, he's going to be a rugby player or a basketball player. President of Ireland. Well, you don't need to be tall to be a president of Ireland, do you? Uh, uh, 
You know, what, what you, you, see, you see potential. You see a child, you see potential. Right? And guess what God sees in us too? You know, this, he can be a saint. He could be a saint. He could be a great priest. He could be a great father, grandfather, mother. You could, you, you could be all these things. You know, he, sees the, he really sees the good in us. But let's pray that we can see the good in each other. We're imperfect. Every single one of us, me included. We're imperfect. But let us pray for that grace to see the good, to see the positive, to affirm the good, and to lift people up. Amen.